In just a few decades after his ascension to the divine world, Maximus's internal strength base had reached the peak of the early second true god level. Any martial artist, even those in the continent of the gods, would be utterly shocked by this speed of progress. It was unknown whether anyone had broken through so quickly in the past. All of this was attributable to the fact that the Great Holy Realm's secret techniques had advanced to the Divine Grade before Maximus ascended to the True God level. This allowed the power of creation contained within the Good Fortune Thunder to propel his internal strength base forward. Indeed, it was now clear that Maximus's decision to delay his ascent for 300 years in the Mystic Dream Continent had been a wise choice. If he had tried to break through to the true god realm right from the start, he might not even have been able to reach the first tribulation true god realm at this moment. The spirit spring is turning the divine stone into an elixir. I wonder how much my talent will increase when I consume it, Maximus mused aloud. His divine flame battle body and golden immortal physique were indeed abnormal. However, Maximus's innate talent was still at the holy level. In the lower realm, such an innate talent could be considered powerful, but in the divine world, it was not worth mentioning. Maximus was soaking in the spirit spring, which had a faint purple color and was strange and enchanting. The spirit spring's power kept nourishing his body, making his insides continuously improve. Unbeknownst to him, Maximus was drunk. When he woke up, it had been more than 10 days. At this moment, the spirit spring had become incomparably clear again. Maximus's talent had also risen from the holy level to the divine grade. He immediately repeated the process with Lord Flame's help. In the hot springs, divine stones were turned into elixirs, as if by magic. After he consumed these elixirs, Maximus's talent rose from the limit of the early divine grade to the border of the intermediate divine grade. Perhaps it was because of the increase in his talent, but Maximus kept feeling like the second level of the true god realm was becoming restless and opening up. He felt overjoyed. One had to know that once one reached the true god realm, every small breakthrough would require a long period of time. Even if Maximus's internal strength base reached the peak of the second level, according to his estimation, it would be difficult for him to break through to the middle stage of the second level over the course of decades, if not centuries. And now, Maximus could sense that the opportunity to break through had arrived. In at most 10 years, he would be able to reach the second level. This was the change brought about by his talent. However, talent was only one aspect of overall strength. It could not compare to one's bloodline or physique time in terms of consequence. Maximus was undaunted by the fact that he had neither. After all, the Divine Flame battle body and golden immortal physique made up for the lack. Now that I have advanced to the true god level and my talent has also reached divine grade, I can allow my parents to absorb these elixirs, Maximus thought to himself. It was time to enhance the strength and health of his family. After refining the rest of his divine stones into elixirs, Maximus placed the precious substance into jade bottles and brought them to the miniature world of the Grey Cloud Divine Hall. There, he planned to distribute the elixirs liberally to increase the internal strength and lifespans of other Maltans but foremost his family. Given the luxury of time and the special environment of the Divine Hall, it was certain some of them would reach the inner precinct and possibly they could ascend to the true God realm. 10 years later, Maximus's internal strength base successfully broke through to the middle stage of the true God's second level without any hindrance. At this point, he also understood that the aid of the Good Fortune Divine Lightning had almost been used up. It was impossible for him to rapidly soar like before, unless he had a greater opportunity. And in this forest, it was obviously impossible to have such an opportunity. 
It's time to leave, he muttered to himself. He then summoned the Red Skylark, whose strength had once again advanced. She was now a third-level divine beast. The Flying Flame Six-Tailed Cat and the Heaven Devouring Wolf were both close to reaching the peak of the second level. The Flying Flame Lion and the Phantom Thunder Leopard had both risen as well, with the Flying Flame Lion close to the upper second level and the Phantom Thunder Leopard having just stepped into the middle level. Let's go! Maximus swept his sleeve and put away the Warcraft Beasts. Then he turned into a streak of light and left. After such a long time in the forest, he naturally had some sense of where the best exit point was. The space in the Divine World was much more powerful than in the lower realms. In his plane, Maximus could fly freely and as high as he wished, but in the Divine World, it seemed that every yard needed to be measured and accurately prepared for. Maximus had encountered many ferocious beasts along the way, but the most powerful one was only at the third level, with most at the second level. Maximus could easily defeat them. However, out of all these ferocious beasts, Maximus only obtained one third-grade Maleficent bead. There was nothing in the other ferocious beasts' bodies. Huh? As he was speeding, Maximus heard the roars of ferocious beasts and human roars coming from his right. His heart skipped a beat. Could it be a native human of the divine world? If that's the case, I could use their help. There weren't many powerful ferocious beasts in this forest, but the range was far beyond Maximus's expectations. It was at least 10 times larger than the Mystic Dream mountain range. And when one's divine soul was greatly restricted, it was easy to get lost. Maximus had also been speeding for such a long time, but he still hadn't left the forest. Circulating the Golden Immortal Step, Maximus vanished in a flash. Not far away, a few strange-looking ferocious beasts surrounded a group of people. The leading ferocious beast had the body of an elephant, the head of a tiger, and three shockingly red eyes. The four hooves of the beast were strong and powerful, and its claws were flickering with a cold light. The people who were surrounded stared at the claws of the beasts with fear in their hearts. One of their third-level peers had just been torn apart by those claws. A young man, whose face was pale and filled with despair, mused aloud. This… this is bad. Though we didn't know it then, this beast we killed earlier was only a child. But now, an Elder One has appeared. What should we do? An Elder Three-Eyed Tiger Elephant had a combat strength that was top among third-grade ferocious beasts. An ordinary third-level True God human might not be a match for such a beast in a one-on-one -on -one battle. More than ten people were surrounded. They wore guard uniforms and protected a man and a woman in the middle. The woman, who was about twenty years old, gritted her teeth and pleaded. Lemmy, this matter has nothing to do with you. Take your people and leave. The target of this group of ferocious beasts is the purple soul flower in my hands. As long as I'm still here, I'll be able to divert the firepower for you. The young man's expression turned stern as he shot back. What nonsense! That's an elder three-eyed tiger elephant, one of the top three killers! Even with so many of us together, we can't stop it. If you're the only one left, you'll be finished." He paused to collect his thoughts, then went on. Rosalina, throw away the purple soul flower. As long as there's no kindling, the fire can't start, as they say. We'll come back when the timing is better in the future. This time, we miscalculated. We won't make the same mistake again. A third-grade vicious beast was considered a beast that ruled the entire forest. There were not many of them. The young woman shook her head firmly, then reasoned. No, father's divine soul is injured. Our enemies are eyeing our family with great anticipation. Only the purple soul flower can restore father's divine soul and raise him back to the fourth level. Otherwise, those big families will definitely invade our territory, and without my father, our family won't have the strength to resist." Lemmy fell silent. He knew that she was right, but with the purple soul flower in hand, 
the vicious beast would definitely not let this matter rest. And even if they dispensed with it now, it was by no means guaranteed that they would survive. Beasts were born to kill. This was something all cultivators in the god realm knew. Generally speaking, once a beast found its target, it would fight to the death. On the other hand, the purple soul flower did not have much effect on human martial artists. At most, it was used to recover the divine soul when the divine soul was injured. For alchemists, perhaps it was more valuable, or it could be used to refine some pills that could strengthen the divine soul. However, it was different when it came to ferocious beasts. When a fierce beast consumed a blooming purple soul flower, there was a certain probability that it would mutate. For example, when a three-eyed elephant tiger beast matured, it typically could not surpass peak third level. But with the aid of the purple soul flower, it could reach the fourth level. The beast didn't have much intelligence, but it had instincts and thus could sense that the purple soul flower would be extremely beneficial to it. With the stakes this high, realistically, all Lemmy and Rosalina could do was wait until the three-eyed elephant tiger beast decided what to do with them. Beside the young woman, a white-robed old man anxiously stated, Miss, the purple soul flower isn't some precious divine-grade heaven and earth wondrous item. Worse comes to worse, we'll go to a bigger city to search for it afterward. You are the only one who cares for your father. You must stay alive for his sake. The flower is not worth it. When the young woman heard this, she was slightly moved. After a long while, she gritted her teeth and finally put down the purple soul flower. Everyone let out a sigh of relief, then prepared to leave. However, at that moment, the three-eyed tiger elephant roared angrily. Its blood-red eyes coldly stared at the group of people, filled with violent killing intent, and it didn't even look at the purple soul flower on the ground. Obviously, between the purple soul flower and revenge, the three-eyed tiger elephant had chosen revenge. With a furious roar, a few level two ferocious beasts next to the three-eyed tiger elephant threw themselves at Lemmy, Rosalina, and the others. Miss, retreat, the old man shouted. He and more than a dozen second tribulation true guards stepped forward, their divine essence shooting out. The three-eyed tiger elephant roared once more. This roar actually contained a sound wave attack. The souls of the old man and the others trembled as they gasped for breath. Their bodies were on the verge of collapse. But even so, the old man and the many guards firmly blocked the young woman and Lemmy. It was only because their divine souls had been attacked by the sound waves that the state of the old man and the others had been greatly reduced. And now they were severely injured. Lemmy, take Rosalina and leave quickly, the old man shouted. Lemmy came back to his senses and held the young woman's hand, preparing to leave. She struggled for a moment, but in the end, she silently followed him. A cold light flashed in the three-eyed tiger elephant's blood-red eyes. It leapt forward. Its enormous body, with unimaginable agility and speed, blocked their escape route. This time, I'll fight to the death, Lemmy declared heroically. But his scream was futile two first-level humans going up against a second-level ferocious beast. The concept didn't make any sense. They were as weak as ants. Yet at that moment, Maximus just happened to arrive. He frowned. This matter was urgent. Just as Maximus was about to take action, he thought of the pear blossom needle he had refined not too long ago. He had been anxious to experience its power for himself, and now was his chance. Even with Maximus's powerful divine soul, he didn't feel anything wrong at all. But what happened next made his expression stiffen. The seven silver needles seemed to have smelled some delicious food as they carried a sense of urgency. While Maximus was stunned, they pierced into the body of the ferocious beasts. A world-shaking scream echoed across the space. The beasts writhed, then fell to the ground. Maximus was dumbfounded. The old man and the dozen guards were also dumbfounded. The scene was grisly, 
but also mesmerizing. Such beasts had always been synonymous with formidable strength and the ability to instill terror. It was rare to see one fall like this. Furthermore, the old man and the others had never heard such a miserable cry from a ferocious beast. They seemed almost pathetic. Maximus's face also twitched. As the owner and refiner of the Seven Pear Blossom Needle, he could feel the emotions of the Seven Needles in real time. As a second-level True God weapon, it had a mind of its own and some degree of emotional intelligence. Maximus could clearly feel the Seven Silver Needles giving him a carefree feeling, as if it were a child who had just eaten a big cake and gotten the best toy. The mysterious god sword said somewhat awkwardly, Now that that's over, you should know about what you just witnessed. Although the level of the seven pear blossom needle is still low, it is nonetheless capable of injuring even a high level true god beast. But this weapon went too far due to its immaturity. It should not have destroyed them in such a savage way. A bead of sweat dripped from Maximus's forehead. In the future, he would have to be careful to better control the pear blossom needle. Otherwise, in the eyes of others, he would seem unnecessarily cruel and callous. The seven silver needles flew in front of Maximus. They were still trembling with excitement, as if they were telling Maximus they had not had enough fun yet and they still wanted to play. Maximus's expression darkened. Then, without saying a word, he put them back into his sleeve pocket and walked away. In an instant, he sensed all eyes on him. Clearly, the group was shocked by what they had just witnessed. Yet they were brought back to their senses by a desperate cry from Lemmy. The old man turned around just in time to see Lemmy being flung through the air by the tail of the three-eyed elephant tiger. The boy was wheezing and grabbing at his chest. Just one move had caused a great injury. The tail of the three-eyed tiger elephant once again swung toward Lemmy. The old man was already approaching. With a wave of his sleeve, a divine sword appeared in his hand. Judging from the fluctuations of the divine sword and the aura, it was a first calamity divine weapon. Go to hell! The old man's sword slashed at the tail of the three-eyed tiger elephant, but it didn't cause any damage. Seconds later, the sword was sent flying. In the next moment, the massive beast attacked the elder, clawing at him with abandon. A hint of fear flashed across the old man's face. Even a third-level true god warrior had been no match for this beast. Rosalina, meanwhile, was frozen with fear. Just as the old man thought he was going to die, Maximus circulated the golden immortal step and appeared in the sky as if he had teleported. Divine Flame Battle Fist, he shouted. The astonishing flame radiance collided with the shining claws, causing Maximus's fist to go numb. He felt as if there was some kind of force cutting across his hand. Borrowing the tremendous force, Maximus flew backward and at the same time, he saved the old man and lifted him up. After landing on the ground, he looked down at his hand, which had traces of blood. He took a deep breath. Maximus didn't know anything about the three-eyed tiger elephant, but according to the fluctuation of its aura, he had already determined that the level of the murderer in front of him wasn't low. Many, many thanks for your help, sir, the old man stated, still feeling lingering fear. Little brother, all fierce beasts hold grudges. We are not in the clear. Run away, now! The moment Maximus attacked, he would unleash the power of his internal strength base. The old man was also a high-level, second-level true god, so he could naturally tell that Maximus was only a mid-second-level tribulation god, the kind that had just broken through. There was no way this kid could defeat a third-level beast. Maximus simply smiled. There was no way he would relent at this point. Surely, if he joined forces with this elder, they could defeat the beast. 
and if he left now, who would give him directions for leaving the forest? The elder naturally didn't know what Maximus was really thinking. He immediately shed tears of gratitude. However, he obviously didn't want to implicate Maximus, and he continued to try to persuade him to leave. It was already too late, of course. The three grotesque eyes of the tiger elephant had already fallen upon Maximus. Although the young woman and Lemmy were its primary targets, the intuition of the ferocious beast told it that this human, who had suddenly appeared, was even more dangerous. In order to take revenge, the first thing to do was to get rid of this danger. The three crimson eyes of the tiger elephant first closed, and when they opened again, they shot out three extremely powerful blood-colored beams. The blood-colored beams contained an extremely violent and destructive power, and the old man was shocked silent. He knew that just one of the beams could blast him into nothingness. Circulating the golden immortal step, Maximus quickly retreated and leapt up once again. Little brother, be careful, the old man shouted anxiously. The three blood-red beams turned mid-flight, now directed at Maximus. Sir, be careful, Rosalina shouted. Even without the young woman's reminder, Maximus had already noticed the three-eyed tiger elephant in front of him. Its huge claws carried a powerful force that was impossible to ignore. Maximus shouted, Divine flame battle body condense! Golden immortal physique condense! Purple black fire fuse! Maximus didn't hesitate to increase his internal strength base to the limit. Divine flame battle armor condense! He continued. The purple flaming battle armor wrapped around Maximus. His defensive abilities had reached the highest point ever. At this moment, the last three beams of light struck the divine flame battle armor. Maximus was instantly swallowed by the blood-red light, and the sound of cracking could be heard continuously. Even though Maximus possessed a powerful defensive technique, he was almost unable to withstand the undeniable difference in strength. Countless cracks appeared on the Divine Flame battle armor from top to bottom. The armor almost collapsed, but it still managed to hold on. Maximus's face turned pale. Apart from feeling slightly uncomfortable, it didn't affect him much. At this moment, the three-eyed tiger elephant was approaching, ready to attack. Fusion! Golden Immortal Heavenly Dragon Finger! He screamed. The purple heavenly dragon roared. Its terrifying finger force violently collided with the beast's claw. The three-eyed tiger elephant was sent flying. Before it fell to the ground, the three-eyed tiger elephant let out a miserable cry. Anyone who heard it would have shed tears. The faces of the old man and the others twitched. Even Maximus had an awkward expression at this point. Meanwhile, amid the chaos, he had secretly released the seven-pair blossom needle. It once again did its destructive work on the beast. Maximus was not thrilled to have been forced to resort to this option. But once the sheer strength of this beast had become clear, he had felt he had no choice. Although the attack and vulgarity of the pear needle of seven pear blossoms were embarrassing, he had to admit that it was indeed a good attack. The third grade vicious beast landed on the ground. Due to the intense pain it was experiencing, its huge body kept struggling and rolling, causing the ground to shake. It was a complete mess, and countless trees were crushed by it. Taking advantage of this opportunity, Rosalina hurriedly picked up Lemmy and ran toward the Elder. Although the beast was in a miserable state, it was still a third-grade beast, and it was only half a step away from reaching the fourth level. And with every tribulation, the internal organs and overall constitution of a being were greatly enhanced. It would thus not easily fall. On the other hand, the Seven Pear Blossom Needle was only a second tribulation divine artifact, so its lethality was limited against a third tribulation true god. Still, Maximus took advantage of this opportunity to chase after the beast. Once it recovered its strength, it would be more difficult for him to deal with it. 
the clone mysterious god sword appeared in Maximus's hand. A powerful aura fluctuation that was comparable to a fifth tribulation divine weapon made everyone breathe heavily. Without caring about the pain in its body, the three-eyed tiger elephant struggled to get up and roared at Maximus. Due to its injuries, its eyes flickered with even more frenzied killing intent. In the next moment, the beast lunged at Maximus. Grand Mysterious Sky Spirit Slash! Maximus shouted in a low voice. The clone Mysterious Sword in his hand surged forward at tremendous speed. It was as if an ancient sovereign had raised the divine sword in his hand and slashed at his enemy. It was filled with a majestic aura. The Grand Mysterious Sky Spirit Slash was a divine skill. It had grown alongside the sword's growth. Of course, what Maximus was holding right now was the Mysterious God Sword's clone, which was only comparable to a Fifth Tribulation Divine tool. That was why Maximus could at most unleash the power of a Five Tribulations Grand Mysterious Sky Spirit Slash. Even so, this slash was still unbelievably powerful. Due to the injury in its body, the beast was unable to unleash its full defense. It was forcefully struck, and in the wake of the attack, a deep slash, some thousands of meters long, was left in the ground. And mind you, this was the Divine World. The damage caused by this slash was enough to show how powerful Maximus was at this point. The old man and the others had shocked expressions. They couldn't help but gulp as they stared at Maximus. The power of the Slash that had just been unleashed was no doubt comparable to the power of a level 4 true god. Yet Maximus surely had not been cultivating for millions of years. What kind of freak had just appeared before them? Maximus's face was pale as he retracted his clone mysterious god sword. Any kind of powerful force would have to pay a price. This Slash was so powerful that it consumed a tremendous amount of energy. With just this one move, all of Maximus's divine origin had been consumed. Isn't this a little too powerful? Maximus thought to himself. Truth be told, he was also shocked by the power of this slash. Originally, Maximus had thought that there would be an intense battle, for he was well aware of the gap between him and a top third grade fierce beast especially given the fact that he had only a clone divine blade at his disposal. The mysterious god sword replied, sensing Maximus's confusion. The one reason is that my clone is extremely strong. The other is that your divine essence, divine soul, divine body, and divine essence quality are extremely high. Divine essence quality? Maximus repeated in confusion as his expression became contorted. The Divine Blade answered, That's right. A true god's divine essence is ranked according to its quality, from the first level to the ninth. Generally, one can achieve the first rank after crossing one tribulation, and so on and so forth. There are always exceptions. Some true gods are afraid of being struck to death by the Divine Lightning. Hence, they try to reduce the power of the Divine Tribulation, and accordingly, the Divine Essence, Divine Soul, and Divine Body are not strengthened to the same extent. These true gods are basically the weakest among those of a given level, and the chances of them becoming ancient gods are small. Even if they succeed by luck, they'll probably be at the lower ancient god early period for the rest of their lives and won't be able to make any progress. He paused to assure Maximus was following, then went on. Of course, if there are low quality true gods, there will naturally be high quality true gods. Some of those with abnormal divine essence, divine soul, and body constitution can surpass a ninth grade true god level when they undergo the ninth tribulation. They are much more likely to become ancient gods. I think you might be one such figure, though oddly, it is only based on your divine essence quality, 
which has surpassed the other metrics. This is why you are able to fight at the fourth level. Maximus narrowed his eyes. Back then, the temple spirit said that true gods are divided into ordinary true gods and extraordinary true gods, but it never mentioned the difference between the two. Could it be? He began, but he could not finish the thought. As for why the quality of the divine soul and divine body was inferior to the divine essence, Maximus naturally knew the reason. The Nine Flames Fire Formula's exotic flame condensed divine essence. It could not be said to have no effect on the divine soul and body. Maximus wanted to continue inquiring with the mysterious god sword about the specific conditions of the divine essence, divine soul, and divine body, but the old man and the young woman were walking over. The young woman wore a grateful expression as she declared, Thank you for saving my life, sir. I am extremely grateful. The old man and Lemmy also hurriedly expressed their thanks. Lemmy was still injured, however, so his breathing was labored. A guard behind him hurriedly took out a pill and fed it to him. There's no need to thank me. As long as you can guide me out of this place, we can consider it even. Maximus stated with a smile. Sir, are you lost? the old man offered in a tone of surprise. This forest was not big, by his standards, and the nearby cities had maps. Could it be that this stranger had just arrived? The elder could barely wrap his mind around the thought. Surely, Maximus had the skills of one who had been cultivating in the continent of the gods for hundreds of thousands of years. The young woman didn't know what the old man was thinking. Because of Maximus's life-saving acts, she only wanted to express her gratitude. So she offered, It just so happens I have a detailed map of the forest. I'm happy to give it to you. Then lead the way, Maximus expressed, cupping his hands. Over the next 10 days of travel, the group naturally encountered some fierce beasts. However, with the aid of the map, the beasts they encountered were basically all at the early second level, so they did not pose a major threat. This map had been put together by the experts in the surrounding cities over several generations, with an eye toward aiding travelers in avoiding high-level beasts. It was accurate 60 to 70% of the time as fierce beasts would not always follow the same patterns of movement. The map would thus be updated every few decades, based on the frequency with which the fierce beasts changed the location of their habitats. Over time, Maximus learned more about his new surroundings. It turned out that this forest was called the Geocentric Forest, and in its eastern region was a city called the Divine Might City. There were a total of five great powers in the city, specifically four prestigious families and one city lord. The old man and the young girl were from the Sardinia family, one of these four top families. The old man's surname was Jebo, and he was not a direct descendant of the Sardinia family. Rather, he was a trusted aide of the family head, who was also Rosalina's father. However, this patriarch had remarried after the death of Rosalina's mother, and as a result, Rosalina's life in the family was not good. The patriarch didn't pay much attention to her anymore. As for Lemmy, he was Rosalina's cousin. Both his parents had died, and compared to Rosalina, his situation was even worse. He was considered an outsider and garnered very little respect even from servants. Rosalina gave all this information to Maximus. He immediately had questions. Since your father is not good to you, why... Just as Maximus finished speaking, he felt that he had said something wrong and immediately swallowed his words. Rosalina smiled bitterly but did not mind and said, Father is indeed aloof toward me, but he is still my father, and with him around I have some degree of protection. If he were to fall... I would have to flee from the family territory, as I would no longer be safe." Maximus nodded his head in understanding. 
As for who would cause trouble for Rosalina, needless to say, it would definitely be her stepmother. These stories led Maximus to have a bad impression of Rosalina's father. He was obviously cold-hearted and capable of discarding even his own daughter. Rosalina's talent was not high, and her strength was average. She had cultivated for nearly a thousand years and had only reached the first tribulation true god realm. This only further encouraged her father to essentially ignore her. A jade tablet suddenly appeared in Elder Jebo's hand, and he handed it over to Maximus. He advised, My friend, take a look at this jade tablet. It might be of some use to you. Lemmy and Rosalina looked at the object, and a strange expression flashed across their faces. Rosalina frowned. Perhaps because she was worried about Maximus, she spoke obliquely. Elder Jebo, that is simply an average guidebook on ferocious beasts. Surely it is not worthy as a reward for our savior. Indeed, she had expected the elder to at least hand over some lower-grade divine stones in impressive quantities. Don't worry, miss. I have a plan in mind, Jebo comforted her. All right, she conceded. Because she trusted Jebo, she elected to wait and hear what he had to say. She was indeed stunned by what happened next. Maximus studied the ordinary illustrated beast handbook with great interest, as if it were the most prestigious of treasures. The others were stunned too. To them, this was the most ordinary of objects, like a standard dictionary or a travel guide. And yet, this dignified second-level true god genius was coveting it before their eyes. Jebo nodded as if feeling confirmation of his hypothesis. After a long while, Maximus withdrew his divine soul and said with a smile, Thank you, Jebo. This ferocious beast illustrated handbook is just what I needed. With this illustrated handbook, Maximus felt as if the veil had been lifted over the situation in this part of the divine world. Knowledge was power to him at this point. Good, good, Jebo responded. Then, after a considered pause, he ventured. You are from the lower plane, aren't you? Maximus was stunned. How did you know? He queried. But quickly, Maximus retracted his stunned expression. He had not been cagey or secretive, and since Jebo had lived for so many millennia, he was naturally able to grasp even the most complex situations. Elder Jebo smiled and said, In the beginning, I didn't know. I had figured you were just lost. But when I learned how exceptional you were, that no longer made sense. The geocentric forest has been mapped for millions of years and comprehensive guidebooks are cheap and readily accessible. To be frank, the only people who get lost are those who are coming here for the first time. He put on a warm smile, then continued. And when I saw your reaction to this most basic of guidebooks, my suspicions were confirmed. Only now did Maximus understand why he was seen through. From the beginning, Maximus didn't intend to conceal his background of ascending from the lower plane, so he smiled indifferently as he admitted. Looks like you pulled one over on me. I'll have to pay better attention in the future. He paused a second and thought, then went on. But Jebo, I noticed that the beasts listed in the book are all level 5 and below. Are there other resources for more powerful beasts? Elder Jebo shook his head. I don't have any he conceded. Maximus turned to look at Rosalina. After all, she was the daughter of the patriarch of the Sardinia family. Surely, she would have access to more rarefied resources. But she also shook her head and admitted, I don't have one here either. After learning that Rosalina did not have any more advanced illustrated guides to the ferocious beasts, Maximus could not help but feel a bit deflated. The guidebook he had in his hand was useful for now, and the next time he encountered a ferocious beast, he would be able to exploit its weaknesses. But in the future, he would surely need knowledge of the stronger beasts. Rosalina saw Maximus's disappointment 
and could not help but say, Divine Might City is only a small municipality in the Cloud State. The Cloud State is located at the border of the east side of the Divine World. The grade of our martial artists is not high, and the level of the ferocious beasts is also low. If one wants to obtain a higher level ferocious beast illustrated handbook, one must go to a larger city. Maximus nodded. The old man coughed lightly and stopped Rosalina from continuing. Then he revealed a cryptic and somewhat mischievous smile and commented, Maximus, it's your first time in the divine world and you don't know anything. For the time being, it's best not to go to those big cities or outside of the Cloud State. You'll enjoy great prestige here. After all, your combat strength is only inferior to that of the leaders of the Five Great Powers. However, if you go to a stronger city, your Second Tribulation True God Internal Strength base will seem a bit low. If you provoke a powerful True God, the consequences will be unimaginable. He paused for effect before proposing. Why don't you stay in Divine Might City for a while? Not only can you increase your internal strength base, but you can also obtain some information about the Cloud State. At least then, you will become familiar with our state. Knowing which power you must avoid and not provoke, you will be much safer. In the past, some true gods who ascended from the lower planes were killed because they did not understand the situation in the divine world and offended disciples of the great powers. Maximus fell into deep thought. Indeed, here, unlike down below, his internal strength base was quite low. What he needed to do now was to keep a low profile, while at the same time increasing his strength and learning about this new environment. He would be safe here. Raising his head, Maximus said with a faint smile, Elder Jebo wants to recruit me? Maximus was not stupid. From Elder Jebo's previous actions, he could guess the old man's motives. Lemmy and Rosalina had come to the same realization at the same moment. From the beginning, Elder Jebo's goal was to confirm whether Maximus came from the lower plane and once he had that confirmation, he would recruit him. After all, the ability to ascend from the lower plane to the continent of the gods at such a young age was a sure mark of extraordinary genius. Sure, everyone knew that ascenders in the lower plane did not have powerful bloodlines, but Jebo understood that was only part of the story, alongside comprehension ability, talent, and martial arts skills. If fortune led to an increase in one's bloodline, then the Ascenders would have a glorious future. It was not impossible for them to become high-level true gods or even ancient gods. In fact, the experts ranked at the top of the Cloud State were most likely Ascenders from the Lower Plains. Lemmy and Rosalina looked at each other. Both registered the interest in the other's eyes. If they could rope in such an ascending figure, there was no doubt their family would improve and could even one day take its place at the top of the great powers. Elder Jebo's intentions had now been laid bare, and there was a moment of awkwardness. Yet after living for hundreds of thousands of years, Elder Jebo's skin was extremely thick. He commented, the Sardinia family is one of the five great powers in Divine Might City. And given Rosalina's status within the family, once she brings back the purple soul flower and the patriarch recovers, he will no doubt be happy to reward you with the status of guest chamberlain. This will give you access to a certain amount of godstones each year. Further, the Sardinia family's Red Turtle Pavilion will be accessible to you. This is where the formulae for all sort of innate divine skills have been stored over the generations. There are also many travel letters from experts there. You will learn a great deal about the Cloud State by consulting these letters. Maximus squinted. He didn't care about the divine stones. 
but the Red Turtle Pavilion could not help but capture his imagination. The knowledge resources there were truly spectacular, like the finest university library, not to mention the innumerable insights into how to improve one's internal strength base. After some consideration, Maximus finally agreed. Rosalina, Elder Jebo, and the others all had joyful expressions. They knew Maximus's true combat strength at this point. He was a ferocious warrior that had even killed the three-eyed tiger elephant. Who wouldn't want him in the ranks of their family? Since he had decided to join the Sardinia family and temporarily become a guest chamberlain, Maximus consciously made an effort to get closer to Rosalina and the others. They, of course, reciprocated. Over the course of the journey, they grew closer, and they would no doubt reach Divine Might City as close associates. When they arrived at the Sardinia family compound, Rosalina immediately sought out her father. She asked a striking young man, with whom she seemed quite close, about her father's whereabouts. He simply laughed, then commented, Big sister, is that you? You look awful! As Rosalina had been traveling through the geocentric forest for ten days, her clothes were in disarray and her hair was all over the place. Get out of the way! Lemmy interjected with a look of disgust on his face. Maximus was deep in thought. This was Rosalina's half-brother? As expected, his talent was extraordinary. At such a young age, he was only a step away from becoming a second tribulation true god. And yet, it was clear he was only a few hundred years old. Maximus was intrigued, to say the least. Maximus thought to himself, This guy must have a middle-level divine-grade bloodline and the special physique to go along with it. He is rather extraordinary. Meanwhile, the tall man, whose name was Azusa, responded to Lemmy. Me, move aside. You're the one who should be moving aside from me. You're not even a proper member of the Sardinia family. So what right do you have to talk to me that way? He laughed conspicuously. Lemmy's face instantly turned ashen, and he was unable to refute. Rosalina frowned. She said coldly, Lemmy's staying in the Sardinia family was a decision made by my mother and father together. Would you dare stand against our father? Azusa paused. He was still somewhat afraid of his father. Glancing around, he shifted his gaze to Maximus, then changed the subject. Who is this person? We don't allow strangers to just waltz through the front door. He is my guest. It has nothing to do with you, Rosalina shot back turning to leave without another word. Azusa's expression turned gloomy as he mused aloud. Rosalina went out to search for the purple soul flower. Could it be that she really found it? According to the latest intelligence, the flower was guarded by a powerful level three beast. When he thought of this, Azusa's expression changed in an inscrutable way. He immediately turned around and walked in another direction. Meanwhile, in an elaborately decorated chamber deep within the Sardinia family compound, a strikingly composed woman raised her eyebrows and declared, That little girl found the purple soul flower? This was Azusa's mother, and even now, after all these years, she intimidated him so much he could hardly speak in front of her. He cleared his throat and said in a high voice, she was full of excitement, hardly able to contain herself. The only explanation is that she found the purple soul flower. The woman's eyes narrowed slightly, then she offered. If that's the case, then that little girl really might have gotten the purple soul flower. Forget it. But this resource will have huge benefits for her father. His soul was injured when he attempted to prematurely break through to the fourth level. But with the flower, not only will his soul recover, but he will be assured the ability to reach the fourth level in the future. 
Azusa stated uneasily. No doubt he will think more highly of her after she brings him the flower. This is not good for us, mother. I wish that old man would just die so I can step in and inherit the throne already. The woman didn't scold her son, for she didn't have any love for the patriarch, whose proper name was Bratislav Sardinia. Their marriage, after all, had been more of a political alliance. A thousand years ago, the Sardinia family wasn't one of the five great powers in Divine Might City. Bratislav had just broken through to the Fourth Tribulation True God realm, and his realm was still unstable. He was surrounded by enemies from all sides. Rosalina's mother was assassinated by one of the other great powers during that period of chaos. In order to stabilize the status of the Sardinia family, Bratislav had resolved to marry into the powerful Marni family and thus took Hesperia Marni as his wife. She was considered the great beauty of the clan, and her talent was top-notch. As was typical of Bratislav's personality, he had made a decision based on upping his own prestige. Over the past thousand years, he had finally stabilized his internal strength-based realm with the help of his alliance with the Marni family. He had even broken through to the middle stage of the Fourth Tribulation True God realm, gaining a firm foothold in the Divine Might City as one of the top powers. However, not long ago, the Marni family had produced a Fourth Tribulation True God, and the family's higher-ups had begun to stir, looking to challenge Bratislav's power. Further, they had embraced Azusa as the future leader of the Sardinia family, and planned to install him as soon as Bratislav died. This was essentially a way for them to control the Sardinia family by proxy. Hesperia laughed darkly before commenting, My son, after all these years, can you still not see your father's true nature? He only thinks about reaping benefits for himself, and he only values those who can bring him such benefits. His last wife had barely been put in the ground before he married me, and I made him the man he is today, one of the great powers of Divine Might City. But trust me, he won't give another thought to that girl unless she manages to find a powerful backer of her own. Hearing this, Azusa finally relaxed. As long as their father continued to think of Rosalina as just another one of his many children, he would still be primed to assume the position of patriarch in the future. Yet his mother saw through his thoughts and declared, How naive! You really think the family elders would let you become the next patriarch so easily? They don't even know your name. But that is not a bad thing. Your internal strength base is too low right now. You need to focus on increasing your power. Concentrate. Work hard. What about the Marni family? Azusa whined. His mother shot back. The Marni family? You really think that they have your best interests in mind? They want to install you as a dummy leader and control you. Trust me, that's not a good life. She thought back to her own experience of being forced into a marriage of political advantage with a man she did not love. She would never forgive her family for that. She hated them. No, it can't be, Azusa protested. Hesperia looked at her son with a somewhat pitying expression. He was truly stupid. However, no matter what, he was still her son. She had no choice but to support him. Your main task now is to improve the internal strength base. As for the rest... Don't get involved in it, she concluded. Azusa bowed his head deferentially and walked out of the room. Following his departure, Hesperia's expression gradually turned cold. She didn't love him, for she could not help but associate him with his wretched father. Yet she cursed herself for spoiling him. If she had not, he would not have developed such a foolish, arrogant personality. Yet when she thought about the fact that the Marni family's plans would crumble once Bratislav recovered, 
she could not suppress a wide smile. At the same time, following his rapid absorption of the purple soul flower, Bratislav's severely injured divine soul gradually recovered. Taking advantage of this opportunity, Rosalina told him about the idea of Maximus becoming a first-grade guest chamberlain. First grade? That's too high. I would say third grade instead, Bratislav shot back. Bratislav sneered in his heart. He didn't believe what Rosalina said about a second tribulation true god killing a top third grade fierce beast. In Bratislav's opinion, it was either the other party had lied to Rosalina, or Rosalina had joined forces with the other party to fool him. In either case, there was no way he was going to entertain the idea of this guy being named a first-level guest chamberlain. Bratislav also knew about Rosalina's situation in the Sardinia family. Naturally, he suspected that Rosalina was helping him increase his power in order to gain his favor. But he didn't really care about Rosalina. She had cultivated for over a thousand years and had just advanced to the true god realm. Whether or not she could advance to the intermediate true god realm in the future was up for debate. Since he didn't care about Rosalina, Bratislav naturally didn't care much about Maximus. The Sardinia family's guest chamberlains were divided into three levels, and the different ranks enjoyed vastly different privileges. Level 3 and Level 2 guest chamberlains were essentially glorified servants. On the other hand, Level 1 guest chamberlains had some degree of power. The most respected among them were roughly equivalent to elders. Even Bratislav extended some respect to them. Further, in order to be named a first-rank guest chamberlain, one needed to have passed three tribulations within the true god realm. Most martial artists at this rank had reached the peak of the third level at the very minimum. Bratislav's interest was greatly reduced when he heard that Maximus was only a second tribulation true god. He was only entertaining her proposal because she had just brought him the purple soul flower. Father, Rosalina shouted lightly, still wanting to argue her case. Second rank and third rank guest chamberlains did not have the qualifications to enter the Red Turtle Pavilion, and she knew that if Maximus could not enjoy this benefit, he would most likely leave. However, Bratislav was impatient and finally gave in. All right, all right. Seeing that the other party has a second tribulation true god internal strength base, and that he really did contribute in the matter of the purple soul flower, I'll give him the status of a level two guest chamberlain. But level one is off the table no matter what. In Bratislav's mind, this was already a gift, but Rosalina had a dejected look on her face. Although she knew her father didn't think much of her, she had expected him to be moved to a greater degree of generosity by her acquisition of the purple soul flower. But just then, Rosalina thought of something and said in a deep voice, Father, remember, in the Sardinia family, if anyone can challenge a rank one guest chamberlain and win, they will automatically be promoted to the first rank. This rule was obviously created for those geniuses with weaker internal strength bases, but greater combat strength. Unfortunately, Divine Might City was only a small city in the Cloud State. There were hardly any great geniuses here, and it was thus extremely rare to find someone who could fight above their level. Or at the least, there had never been such a figure in the Sardinia family. <sighs> Bratislav's probing gaze swept over Rosalina as he pondered in his heart. Could it be that she is telling the truth and has confidence that this guy can fight above his level? When he thought of this, Bratislav's firm refusal loosened. If this was true, it would greatly increase his power and prestige to be associated with such a figure. He said faintly, Are you sure about this? Rosalina took a deep breath and nodded. Having seen Maximus's combat strength, 
she was confident in his chances. After thinking for a while, Bratislav slowly stated, All right, since you have such confidence, I will agree. But it's not like this guy is in the room with us. We have no idea what he will think. Will he accept the proposal? Rosalina was uncertain, so Bratislav said in a deep voice, Bring that person here, so he can ask my permission himself. Not long after, Rosalina brought Maximus over. Along the way, she explained the sequence of events to him. Maximus was irked at first, but seeing that Rosalina had tried her best to argue his case, eventually his heart softened to the idea. As soon as Maximus walked in, Bratislav boomed. So, you want to be a first-grade guest chamberlain of the Sardinia family? Maximus's expression did not change, but his impression of Bratislav was now even worse. Bratislav was acting as if this position was equivalent to being crowned emperor of the entire divine world. If it was not for the fact that Maximus was reliant on the Sardinia family to better understand the situation in the Cloud State, he would have flown away by now. Maximus responded in a tone that was neither servile nor overbearing. I was invited by your daughter to come here. If the Sardinia family master does not wish me to stay, I will take my leave. Bratislav's expression darkened. He was dissatisfied with Maximus's disrespectful tone. Yet he was somewhat impressed by Maximus's confidence. He chuckled, then offered, You must be kidding. You are my daughter's savior, and if it wasn't for you, I would have never obtained the purple soul flower. I can't just send you off, right? Bratislav wanted to maintain the upper hand by appearing supremely comfortable with the whole arrangement. Maximus twitched his mouth and was a little speechless. Perhaps Bratislav also felt that he had put on an act. He immediately changed the topic. Although you saved my daughter's life, rules are rules. You are only a mid-second tribulation true god. According to the rules, you are only eligible to become a level 3 guest chamberlain. He cleared his throat, then continued. However, rules are dead and people are alive. As long as you can defeat a rank 1 guest elder, I will give you that privilege. Maximus queried, May I know whom I will be challenging? <laughs> There's no need to be anxious, sir. I have already prepared an opponent for you. Please, follow me. Bratislav explained, gesturing toward another room. After passing through a series of long hallways, Maximus, Rosalina, and Bratislav walked onto the Sardinia family training field. A muscle-bound man with a mohawk looked up as soon as the patriarch appeared and offered, An honor to see you, sir. At the same time, he was mystified by why the patriarch had called him here. It's him! Rosalina spat out as a look of thick disgust flashed across her face. Maximus queried about the man's identity using the voice transmission technique. She explained, Maximus, this person is called Nyon. He is a first grade guest warrior who just arrived at our compound a few years ago. He is a lecherous person and countless women have filed complaints against him. Although he is disgusting, his strength isn't ordinary at all. He has already reached the Third Tribulation True God Realm, close to the mid-early period. You have to be careful. Nyon had a divine body called the Divine Flame Combat Physique. However, its grade wasn't high. It was only at the medium grade and was in no way comparable to the third level of the True God Realm. Even so, it made it harder to battle him. Maximus looked at the other party. Clearly, Nyon had no intention of hiding his feelings for Rosalina. It was also obvious that Rosalina had been harassed before, which was why she hated him so much. 
Bratislav laughed and introduced Maximus to his opponent. This man saved my daughter, so she wants to give him the rank of Grade 1 Guest Chamberlain as repayment. But you know the rules of the Sardinia family. No matter what, it is impossible for a second tribulation true god to become a first grade guest elder, unless he challenges a first grade guest elder and wins the battle. Hence, my call to you. Maximus frowned. Bratislav was obviously setting a trap, invoking Rosalina to stoke Nyon's anger. As expected, Nyon, who had up until now mostly ignored Maximus, immediately cast a hostile gaze upon him. After that, he commented with a sneer. So that's how it is. Patriarch, don't worry. I will carefully test whether this little guy has the qualifications to become a first grade guest chamberlain. Seeing that he had provoked Nyon's hostility toward Maximus, Bratislav smiled complacently in his heart and thought to himself, Now I will definitely have Nyon's loyalty. And if Maximus is indeed what Rosalina says, and he emerges victorious, then I will have his loyalty. Either way, I win. A cold light flashed across Bratislav's eyes. On the training field, Maximus and Nyon faced each other from afar. Before the battle had even begun, Nyon's voice came through the transmission technique. Stay away from my woman! You'll never have her! Your woman? Maximus responded. Rosalina's never even mentioned you. Nyon snapped. Shut up! I've dealt with pretty boys like you before. You're all talk. He paused for effect, then screamed. Divine War Flame Body, condense! His right hand drew a line in the void, and endless flame blades swept out like a storm toward Maximus. Golden Immortal Physique Condense! Divine Flame Battle Body Condense! Purple Black Fire Fuse! Maximus shouted in turn. Facing a high-level true god, Maximus didn't dare to be careless. He immediately raised his internal strength base to its limit. Bratislav's pupils constricted, and his expression was one of shock. With his power of insight, how could he not see how powerful Maximus' ultimate technique was? What a powerful divine body! What a powerful divine fire! It's almost on par with an intermediate divine body and medium-class divine fire! Where did this kid come from? Bratislav thought to himself, misperceiving Maximus' holy realm techniques as divine-level techniques because he was unfamiliar with them. It was precisely because of this misunderstanding that Bratislav immediately made a decision. He had to recruit such a powerful divine body into his own faction. In the arena, Maximus made his move. Eighth Heaven Oscillating Fist, he declared. A violent, shaking force that was like a tsunami, along with purple flames, surged out violently as if aiming to swallow the entire arena. The fiery wave carried an unparalleled force of vibration, and it seemed like it was going to devour Nyon. What? Nyon was dumbfounded. He never thought that Maximus, a mere second tribulation true god, would be able to unleash such a terrifying power. This is impossible, he roared as he kept retreating, blocking the attack. However, the more he tried to defend himself, the more profoundly he felt Maximus's power. What shocked him the most was that every time he tried to defend himself, part of his attack would disappear mysteriously. The flames had inexplicably become stronger. By all logic, Maximus should not have been as strong as Nyon. The gap between the second and third tribulation true god was like an abyss after all. Even if Maximus used the Divine Flame Battle Body and the Golden Immortal Physique, he still wouldn't be able to defeat the Third Calamity True God, or even the early Third Calamity True God, with his internal strength base. However, Maximus' Divine Essence had already reached the Fourth Grade. 
This imperceptibly increased Maximus's attack power to a remarkable extent. Further, the purple-black flame had the unique characteristic of being able to devour his opponent's divine essence for its own use. With the current level of the flame, as long as the opponent's internal strength base did not exceed the fourth tribulation true god level, and their divine essence did not exceed the fourth stage, the purple-black fire could continuously absorb a small portion of the opponent's divine essence. This would increase and decrease the opponent's speed, and Maximus's attacks would only become stronger and stronger. All of these factors resulted in Maximus now gaining the upper hand. Strange divine fire, high-grade divine essence, and a powerful divine-grade skill comparable to a medium-class technique. This kid… Bratislav mused, now aloud. Rosalina's face was filled with joy. With this kind of performance, it would be shocking if Maximus did not become a first-level guest chamberlain. Yet what made her even more pleased was that Nyon had been taught a lesson. Ah! All of a sudden, Nyon let out an extremely shrill cry. Anyone who heard it would feel a chill down their spine. Maximus had once again used the seven pear blossom needle to attack, and now his opponent was experiencing an indescribable degree of full body surging pain. Before this point, Maximus had made a series of quick calculations and concluded that it was unwise to take out the mysterious god sword, as this would only cause Bratislav to covet it. Since that was the case, he could only end the battle quickly, and the Pear Blossom Needle was the ultimate sneak attack. Fusion! Divine Flame Battle Fist! Maximus continued. This punch struck Nyon fiercely, causing him to feel as if he had just been hit by a hurricane. He gasped for air, then fell over like dead weight. Maximus retracted the Seven Pear Blossom Needle and purposely let the object release its Second Tribulation Divine Weapon Aura. A Second Tribulation Divine Artifact was no longer useful to a Fourth Tribulation True God. Thus, he didn't need to worry about Bratislav coveting it. Sure enough, when Bratislav discovered the level of the Divine Artifact used to ambush Nyon, his face was filled with confused disappointment. Nonetheless, he declared in a bright tone, Young man, your combat strength has broadened my horizons. From today onward, you will be a first-grade guest chamberlain of the Sardinia family. No matter how intimate Bratislav tried to be with his tone, Maximus still maintained a calm expression. For he knew the Patriarch was only interested in furthering his own strength. If someone more impressive than Maximus came along, he wouldn't hesitate to seize the opportunity. This was also the reason why Maximus didn't expose the mysterious god sword. Even if it was a clone of a divine blade, its power was comparable to a fifth tribulation divine weapon. For a true god of the fourth tribulation, having such a weapon would no doubt feel like a triumph. Further, this would distinguish him among the other great powers, as in all of Divine Might City, none of the leaders had reached the fifth level. Bratislav was shameless, now pretending as if he had been a great supporter and friend of Maximus from the beginning. Brother, this is definitely a great blessing to the Sardinia family. Tonight, I will arrange a banquet to congratulate you on your new position, Bratislav declared as he patted Maximus's shoulder. Maximus smiled faintly and said, No need. But I need to introduce you to the family's higher-ups. This is standard practice, Bratislav instinctively explained. However, Maximus insisted. He was unwilling to participate in such an empty ceremony. Bratislav registered Maximus's determination and uttered in a low tone, I won't force you. Then he turned his head to Rosalina and added, Take good care of guest chamberlain Alexei. Never let him leave your sight. Do you understand? Yes, Rosalina nodded, feeling a little uncomfortable. 
Bratislav's actions today allowed Rosalina to finally see her father's character clearly. It was true that his interests were above all, and the fact that she was his daughter would never be enough for him. She needed to bring him direct benefits. Please rest. I hope you enjoy your accommodations, Bratislav stated obsequiously as he left the practice field. As for Nyon, who had fainted in the training field, Bratislav had long forgotten about him. Before walking out the door, Bratislav gave Maximus a meaningful glance. The Patriarch had clearly misunderstood the situation, thinking that Maximus had come to the Sardinia family territory because he was interested in Rosalina. Bratislav mused to himself, I never thought this girl would bring such a powerful son-in-law to our clan. If I had, I would have treated her better from the beginning. He felt a trace of regret in his heart. However, this regret was quickly replaced by joy. He continued, So what if I was neglectful in the past? No matter what, I am the father of that little girl. If that Maximus guy really becomes my son-in-law, he will have to respect me. And he no doubt has a great power backing him. Once he becomes my son-in-law, all the benefits will belong to me. At that time, the fourth level will feel like child's play. I will be able to ascend to the fifth or even sixth level. Heck, maybe even the seventh. At this thought, Bratislav's heart was burning with passion. Such a figure would no doubt become a titan of the Cloud State. Rosalina's face was filled with embarrassment at her father's actions. She simply did not know what to say. Maximus sighed, then offered, Miss Sardinia, although it might seem scary, I really think it is best if you leave your father's territory for your own happiness and well-being. Rosalina was startled, and her face was full of bitterness. Before this day, she had naively thought that she still had some status in her father's eyes. But today, she had come to see everything clearly. Now that she had exhausted her usefulness to her father by bringing him the purple spirit flower, she only mattered to him because of her connection to Maximus. Rosalina smiled gently, and at the same time, a tear fell down her cheek. She responded, Thank you, Maximus, but where can I go? Maximus was also stunned. Indeed, with Rosalina's strength as a mere first calamity true god, she would be at the bottom of society no matter where she ended up. In the Sardinia family, she had Bratislav behind her. Even if Bratislav did not value her, others would hesitate before crossing him. And if she married into a great power, there was still hope that her father would come around to feeling care toward her. However, if she left the Sardinia family and Divine Might City, who knew what her life would be like? The atmosphere was a little still for a moment. Rosalina said a few more polite words and then left. Maximus muttered to himself, This Sardinia family territory is not a place to stay for a long time. When my internal strength base has improved, after I gain some understanding of the cloud state, I should leave as soon as possible. As for Rosalina and Lemmy, Maximus frowned slightly. He had only interacted with them for a short while and had not yet gotten a sense of their true nature. He went on, I have been observing them for a few days only. If their quality is all right, I will ask them to join me. I won't force them if they don't want to leave. If they're willing to leave, the miniature world inside the Grey Cloud Shrine might be a good place to go. Within a few days, everyone had heard that a new first level guest Chamberlain had arrived and that he was pursuing Rosalina. Many disciples, officers, and guardians of the Sardinia family were thinking of excuses to meet him. The elders had all sent him invitations, which, much to their dismay, had been totally ignored. These days, Maximus had been keeping a low profile. Gradually, the news about him lost its sense of urgency. Indeed, as time passed, the elders developed a negative impression of Maximus due to his lack of interest in their overtures. Bratislav, on the other hand, 
was satisfied with this. He didn't want his precious find to be recruited by one of the elders. After everything had settled down, Maximus finally entered the Red Turtle Pavilion. The first thing Maximus wanted to find was some internal strength letters. In order to cultivate, he needed to understand the internal strength system of the Divine World clearly.